Yo, what's going on people? King Riches back again with another video, yeah. So today I am going to be doing my review of the Netflix Netflix uh, series Top Boy, right? Top Boy is a very successful show that um, a lot of people around the world have been watching and it depicts uh, the life of uh, drug dealers in London right particularly uh these guys are gonna be from um ethnic minorities and predominantly black guys yeah or black people right and i think that it is very uh important that somebody like me who actually comes from that side of town that kind of environment and stuff like that i think that is very important that somebody like me makes a very honest and challenging review of a show like top boy right a lot of people will probably disagree with a lot of the things i'm gonna say or they're probably gonna be upset with some of the things i'm gonna say but at the at the end of the day i know that what i'm saying is genuine and it's the truth right now i'm going to be talking about top boy specifically but there are many many shows and movies just like top boy it's not just the the show top boy in particular it's just this kind of media which is consistently put out there which deliberately uh shows black men in a certain image particularly right now i want to say this at the top that in a in a show like top boy right there are no heroes right there are no heroes in that show it is only villains villains and accessories <laughs> you lot really need to understand this because at the end of the day in my opinion in my community in the black community a lot of times we romanticize criminals we romanticize dysfunction and a lot of times we look at criminals as heroes because a lot of times we don't really get any other media uh media stereotype there's no they what you notice is that a lot of times black men are very depicted very much depicted in a one-dimensional light it's either you're an entertainer of some sort particularly a rapper or an athlete right if you if you don't fall into one of those archetypes usually you just don't exist according to the media you don't exist right and if they do show black guys outside of those two archetypes usually they're just like background characters they're they're usually the people that get made fun of or they get played or some some stuff like that and it's it's really actually quite damaging because not all black guys are gangsters not all black guys are doing illegal activities there are black guys out there who are good legitimate husbands and fathers there are black boys that have decided I am not going to go down the route of crime and I'm going to actually make something of myself. I'm going to be academic. There are black boys that are not naturally athletic and, and gifted athletically. We are just as balanced as any other ethnic group or ethnicity. But for some reason in the media... For some reason in the media, we are depicted as, uh, you know, as I said, rappers, entertainers, athletes, or just straight up criminals. Um, and it is, it's a very dangerous, destructive imagery that they put out there. Now, in the chat, somebody said, turn the mic up, King. Like, let me see. Yeah, the mic's turned up, man. If you can't hear me, that's your own hardware. Press one in the chat if you can hear me loud and clear. 
Yeah, press one in. Yep, someone said the mic's clear, and I know it is because I can see it on my dashboard. So, don't know, it might be you, mate. But anyway, back to what I'm saying. Sometimes people, you gotta understand, sometimes people come into live streams and say stuff in the chat to distract what is going on. So, I'm gonna get back on track. All right, Top Boy, Summer House. There are two main characters, Deshane and Sully, right? Now, Deshane is played by a guy called Ashley Waters, um, a.k.a. Asher D. Yeah, if you're from London, you probably know who Asher D is. He comes from the Soul Solid crew back, back, back in the days, yeah? Um, and then Sully is played by uh, Kano or Kane. And he's a grime MC from back in the day, an another musician. So both the two main characters are like rappers slash MCs in from London, um, very very well known, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, right? And what you'll find with these two characters is that they are the main characters, and in some ways they are perceived as like the protagonists. Especially Duchesne. Duchesne is, I believe that Duchesne, right up until the end, was seen as a protagonist. He was seen as like a kind of like a, a anti-hero, good guy. He's a good guy at heart, but you know, he has to do what he has to do and stuff like that. But, um, oh yeah, big up Kano. Kano's from Nasty Crew. That's a grime, grime crew from London, East London. Um, Asher, Asher D's from Soul Solid, which Soul Solid comes from South London, yeah? Um, but basically, at the end of the day, these two are criminals. These two are criminals, they're drug dealers and murderers, right? They, they deleted people in cold blood, you know, they committed a lot of crimes, you know, they did a lot of bad things. And at the end of the day, um, it just goes hand in hand with the idea that, you know, criminals in the black community are romanticized, right? We always give concession to criminals. We always try to relate to criminals. You know, uh, we, we always like to brag about how we know criminals personally. We grew up with criminals. Uh, uh, criminals are our best friends. They're our brothers. They're our dads. And it is is very actually backward and dysfunctional. A lot of times you even hear guys that didn't even come from any, you know, really bad times. They wasn't involved. They wasn't active. They never robbed anyone. They never sold anything. They never hurt nobody. But they would scream from the roof, the rooftops that they come from the hood. Oh, I'm from the hood. I'm from the hood. I'm from here. I'm from there. They start talking about their postcode and all of this nonsense. And they wasn't even active, right? Because within our community is seen as cool to come from dysfunction. It's seen as cool to be a dysfunctional person, especially with us black guys. We have to keep it real because a lot of times, you know, on YouTube, you hear a lot of modern woman talk. You hear a lot of modern woman talk on my channel. I ain't going to lie. Most of, most of the content I put out is talking about dating and relationships right now, but at the same time, I like to be, you know, balanced and talk about the, the shortcomings of us guys, especially guys in my community. You have to keep it real. You know, for me personally, it took a long time and it took me having to go to live in another country and come back and see how they live and, you know, learn about psychology and learn about sociology and learn about black history and learn about a lot of things before I really got the, all the pieces together to make the actual true picture. And the truth is, is that we are conditioned and programmed to believe that we are dysfunctional and that is our culture especially as blacks that are living in the West, especially as blacks that live in the US and the UK. We are conditioned and socially engineered to believe that this, this dysfunctional lifestyles is our culture, doing it for the culture. This music is our culture. This keeping it real is our culture. It's, it's a lie. It's all a lie. 
you need to understand that there is no balance in the media. When we look at other communities and their representation in the media, there is balance. You will see some of them are musicians. You will see some of them, yeah, they may be gangsters. Some of them will just be blue collar workers. So some of them will be great fathers and husbands and do the right thing and legit. Some of them are just like, you know, you know, homeless, you know, not doing anything, waste men. Some of them are lover boys. Some of them are players. Some of them are just loners. Some of them are policemen and women. And they get respect in their community. Let me say that bit again. When you look at other ethnic groups and you look at their representation in the media, you will see that individuals in their community can be a part of the authorities and still get respect. In fact, they are seen as heroes. They are seen as heroes. In fact, when you watch most superhero movies, like Batman, for instance, it's always led by people of certain demographics. They're working with the police, these superheroes. And they are adored. But for some reason, when it comes to this community here, oh no, you're a pig. You work for the authorities, you're a pig. Nah, you need to keep it real. You need to be real. You need to you need to be a gangster. Now listen, let me just say this one thing like I don't believe that I'm smarter than anyone else. I don't believe I'm the smartest guy. I don't believe that I'm better than anyone and I've made loads of mistakes in my personal life as well. I've done a lot of naughty things that I shouldn't have done as well. Right? I'm not I wasn't the baddest boy out there you know I wasn't some gang boy or whatever like that you know but I did my fair share of naughty things bad things I shouldn't have been doing but it comes to a point where your eyes get opened to the real world and you have to make a choice of are you going to carry on the way you've been going or are you going to step into the light for me personally, I can't, I can never encourage that dysfunctional lifestyle. I can, I just can't. It goes against my, my conscience. I feel bad. Like, for instance, slight detour. Like, things that I've done, like, for instance, getting tattoos and stuff like that. I never encouraged other people to do it. I never encourage other people to do it. You know, um, I was a pothead for many years when I was younger. Like, my teenage years, I was a pothead, hardcore. I never, ever encourage or endorse anyone to, to smoke. I've, I've committed, I've done some things that have been against the law. And I never encourage in, or endorse anyone to go and do them things. Because at the end of the day, like, I know that the truth that this whole is all cool and you do these things to get fast money or to be popular or to look attractive to the to to girls bro it's a lie fam it's a lie and a lot of um the themes you see in top boy are a lot of the uh, consistent negative stereotypes which are hyper focused on black guys and black people in general and i'm going to start from the top what you notice in Top Boy, straight from the jump, is that they are all in this low-income environment. They live living on housing estates. They're all living in housing estates. Yeah? Flats. And obviously, in this kind of environment, they 
you know, it's low income, you know, everybody's basically broke, you know, and the only people who seem to be doing well are the criminals, the ones that are selling poison in, within their community. They're the only people that are making any money, bro. Or oh, that's how Topway would, would makes it look like. So, just so there, it gives off that 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 um that image of you know our black guys that you or know, or black people living in low income environments, you know, living in you know like kind of grimy environments, you know, I'm from the hood, I'm from the gutter, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Then. The other theme that you catch on to very quickly, there's no dads. Hmm. There's no fathers. Now, I'll be real with you. I never watched season one like that. I never watched the first season of um, Top Boy. I watched it here and there, but I didn't actually get into it like that. I think I was still in America when that was really popping. Uh, but I watched season two and season three. I actually watched the last episode just now. I'd literally just completed the whole um, show just now, right? And, oh yeah, for anyone in America, uh, a council flat or, um, or that, that kind of environment is basically housing project, right? Where people with low income, they are housed and they all kind of live in the same blocks, the same uh, campus, let's just say. But anyway, there's no fathers, so what happens is, is that you have a lot of these families where it's just their mum and there may be, you know, multiple children, maybe one child, whatever. But they're all living in, you know, more or less poverty. You have um, these these families where um, the, the mum is, there was one where the mum is basically an immigrant and she you know, the, the immigration are trying to get her out of the, the house, they're trying to deport her and stuff like that. Then there was another incident where they the immigration was trying to deport the, the, the mother's son and stuff like that. You know, all of these kind of like, you know, it's just like, oh, you know, negative imagery, like, oh, you come from some dysfunctional background, blah, 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 right? And I just feel like it's about time in the media they show the other side of life because guess what? They, every black boy and every black family is not living in poverty and every black boy and every black family is not living in housing estates. Some, some families, some black people are living in very affluent areas and living a good life. They don't have to do crime. Big up to Ice Wife for the super chat. He says, have you seen Peckham Incident Shop Owner? Yeah, I saw that already. But let's stick to this right now. Big up Ice Wife for the super chat. And you lot hit the like button. What? Bruh, half of you have not hit the like button, bro. You lot need to... You see, this is the problem. This is why I do, do this video. Because at the end of the day, if you was... Uh, watching Top Boy right now, I, no one would have to ask you to hit the like button. But when somebody like me who's telling you the truth or, or speaking some real true facts, you lot don't want to support it. And that's why these certain types of media that is put out there that has a negative social engineering on our community always gets pumped out there and pushed out there because you lot love it. You lot love it. You don't love it, bro. Like, you don't never... The, 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 the problem with our community is that we actually l believe in dysfunction and negativity. We actually buy into it. We don't want to... We don't want to learn anything. We don't want to read no books. We don't want to think about things that are positive. You know, more, most of the time in our community, all we're thinking about is sleeping with other people and, and you know, materialism. Sad, bro. Very, very sad. 
always focus on things that are not going to, uh, you know, progress anybody. Anyway, so back to Top Boy. Right? So there's no dads. So that's a running theme already because, you know, in our communities, you know, most of us only grew up with our mums. I know I did and I know most of my friends, they only grew up with their mum. And that's what they like to put out in the media. Even though there are a lot of black guys who look after their children. There's a lot of black guys that look after their children. And I know them personally. I have friends who have children and they look after their kids. Why are they never shown? You never see that in the media. You never see that in these kind of shows and movies. No, it's always the same household. Mum, kids. Mum and dysfunctional kids, rather. Let me make that straight, man. Let me make that clear. There, it will be, and there will be the oldest child will be a boy. The oldest boy will be like the the breadwinner in the house. So you have the mummy who the mum who is a grown adult, right? Who wasn't able to uh, get a good job or whatever. She's gonna be struggling. You know, they're gonna be eating baked beans out of tins or whatever, right? And then the, the son will have to step up and be the breadwinner in the house. And, you know, he's got to do whatever he's got to do by any means possible to make money for his mum, who's a grown adult. And the boy's a boy. This is the same idea. Like, as many times that happens in Top Boy, is in different families in Top Boy. Like, the, the, the oldest boy has to end up, have to go outside and commit crimes to provide for his mum and his household. And that theme is not just in Top Boy, it's in loads of movies and it's in loads of shows. What's the other show that came out? Blue Story. Isn't that the same in Blue Story? Put, press one in the chat if you saw Blue Story. Like... I'm actually sick of these themes, these negative stereotypes. I'm sick of them. And, and the reason why they're called stereotypes is because they're a reflection of reality. But the other realities never get highlighted. They never get representation. Right? But anyway, so there's that stereotype. The next stereotype that I want to talk about is that the fact that all these criminals, they seem to get girls very easily. Remember, these guys are criminals. They are dealers. They are selling poison within their community and they are deleting people. Deleting people. Indiscriminately. But for some reason, they are seen as mega attractive. They ain't got no problem with the ladies. No problems at all. Like, fam, you got to understand how destructive that is, especially, again... In other ethnic ethnic groups or communities, you know, you can be a guy and be whatever you want to be and you will find some respect in your community. You can be a policeman. You can be a fireman. You can work a nine to five. You can do whatever you want to do. And yeah, women in your community are still going to look at you like, yeah, that's somebody I could get with. But in my community, in our community, for some reason, being a criminal is, is highly attractive. Highly. And Top Boy, and shows like Top Boy, and movies like Top Boy, they always display that running theme. And it's in the music as well. Yeah. Don't all your favourite rappers who rap about committing crimes, don't they rap about sleeping with other men's wives and sleeping with married women and their man, the, 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 guy, the, the guy of the woman they're sleeping with, he's a square, you know, he's not a thug like me, he's not a criminal, she wants to sleep with a criminal, X, Y, Z. Running theme. 
So what does that do? It encourages that lifestyle on onto young impressionable influ in, in, high, easily influenced young minds in our community because when you look at somebody that looks like you but an older version and it looks like they're successful and they're winning and they're getting all the girls well you know for those young impressionable minds it's going to look like the right thing to do especially when men and women are are giving them respect and looking at them, looking at them as heroes this is how it is we got Lance Noir, El, Larry Elder said it best versus CTG, father, fatherlessness. We got Lance Noir. I've done reaction videos where women in my community talk about how they like street guys and they like thugs. I've done numerous reaction videos to where women have said they would rather date a scammer over a, a guy that does a nine to five. I've seen, I've done loads of reactions to that. I've seen many videos of girls straight up saying that they would rather date a criminal because it's more exciting. They make fast money and, you know, they're just better. They're just cooler. And they make all kinds of, uh, what's it? Excuses. Oh, you know, they might be a, they might be a criminal, but he's a good guy on the inside. Bro, why don't you just get a legit guy who's a good guy on the inside? There's probably more of those walking around. But anyway. Another theme in Top Boy is the lack of loyalty. There's a saying, loyalty amongst theme thieves. That does not exist in Top Boy. There's no loyalty to anyone. Anybody can get deleted by anyone at any time, bro. It's ruthless. To be honest, I actually like that element in Top Boy because that highlights the fact that in that lifestyle, your life can get turned off just like that. And it could be by the person that you call your friend. I like that because that is actually a deterrent. It's one of the only few deterrents that I really saw in that in that show. Now again, listen, this is not because I have anything against the people that acted in that show or anything like that. And I, in fact, I actually know people that were actually in Top Boy. I know a couple people that were actually in that show, personally know them. But at the end of the day, I have to call a spade a spade. And that's what I'm going to do. Like, it is full of negative black stereotypes. Black guys being gangsters and criminals. The girls being attracted to gangsters and criminals. You know, these lot having parents that could not support their own household and their children so their children had to go out there and become criminals to support their grown ass parents bro that's sad that is sad i'm sorry if you bring a child into this world and then your child has to grow up in poverty to the point where they have to go out and commit crime to support you you failed you failed Man or woman, you failed. You're a disgrace. You should be ashamed of yourself. And the worst thing is these women know that, or these, these parents, sorry, these single parents know that their children are doing, doing God knows whatever out there, but they don't even question it because they're getting fast money. The bills are being paid. Don't respect it. Don't respect it at all. Again, there's people that are coming to the chat to try and derail the conversation. Do, just, just ignore them or just block them. If you're a moderator, block them as well. And stay on topic as well. Please do not get derailed in the chat. All right. Look, at the end of the day, like, I just feel like this. When you watch, like, shows like this and movies like that, this, it, it glamorizes 
Whether, whether the people who produce the show say, oh, you know, we're not trying to, we're trying to highlight, you know, the negatives, it glamorizes it. Glamorizes the lifestyle. It glamorizes the dysfunction. It's just no good. Three seasons of of just crime and uh, a murder, like three seasons, bro. And it's not like the story is surprising or, you know, is there's some mad plot twist or some stuff like that. Bro, you can predict more or less everything that's going to happen in, in shows like this. You can predict it from the beginning. As I said, first off, you know, the family live in a low income environment. Yeah, a desperate environment. The parents can't really afford to give the children a, a decent life. The children grow up angry and frustrated, being broke, and then they go outside and then they commit crime. Then they join a gang and then it's all good at first. They're making a little bit of money, spending their money frivolously. Next thing, now enemies come, somebody gets robbed or someone gets beaten up and then now they have a little gang war and then people get deleted and then, you know, it just carries on for a little bit and then until one of the main characters get deleted or thrown in jail. That's what happens. It's usually the same story every single time. Blue story was the same. Top boy is the same. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, and this goes for American shows as well. Like, it's the same story. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a new movie uh, talking about, you know, the life and times of, of this guy in the hood. And, you know, he's just trying to make make it out the hood and you know on the side he's trying to be a rapper on the side he's trying to launch his music career but the hood keeps bringing him back keeps bringing him back to his old ways bro like it's the same story over and over again why don't they pick a, a different narrative as i said we're like bro we're not a monolith like black men and black guys are not a monolith black people are not a monolith In this show, it depicted a boy who must have been 14 years old going out, like, dealing. He went out and started dealing to support his household. And he lived with his mum in the council, council estate. Bruh, like, and then he got deleted, bro. And it's just like, bro, like, like these storylines are just like I'm 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 sick and tired of these same storylines, bro. Can we see something different? Can we see something that's uplifting? Can you see something that is going to encourage the young impressionable kids that, okay, you don't have to be a rapper, you don't have to be an athlete, and you don't have to be a criminal. Maybe they should stop uh, uh, pu pushing out those kind of narratives. Like, like there's actually other options out there. And if you do take one of those other options, you can equally get as much respect as those other guys, if not more. Why do you think that that doesn't exist? Why is it that when it comes to our community, it's only negativity that sells. Why is that? Why is that in Top Boy, there was only two black, guy, black guys in, in the show that were really legit they didn't dabble in anything dodgy that was Deshane's brother I guess it was his older brother who worked for an estate agent and he didn't want any part of Deshane's life and then Deshane's middle younger brother not not Stefan the youngest one but his middle brother that was in uni Why is it only two? 
Everybody else was dealers. Everybody else was criminals. And everybody else were dealers and criminals. And they got respect, bro. They got respect from everybody, bro. This shit, uh, uh, Jamie's brother, right? Jamie's brother that got went to uni, he, what, he, he didn't really get respect. He was just in the house all the time, like. You know? Um, Deshane's older brother, he didn't get no respect. He... Bro, let me let me show you how deep this goes, bro. Listen closely. In Top Boy, right? Deshane, the younger brother, is a criminal, hardened criminal. He deletes people and sells poison on a big level, at a big scale, right? Even though he's somewhat depicted as the protagonist, right? His older brother is legit and works for a state agent, right? Now, they both come from a single parent family, a single parent background, right? With their mum that lives on the council estate. Now, their mum gets sick. She's on her deathbed, basically, right? Deshane's outside committing crime, whatever. The older brother, I think his name was Chris. The older brother, Chris, was by the mum's bedside. And when the mother was taking her last breath and Chris was holding her hand, she called out for Deshane. She didn't even know who Chris was. On her last breath, bro, she was calling out for Deshane, the drug dealer, the murderer, the criminal son. She was calling out for him. And Chris, who's the legit guy that works a nine to five, that's not doing anything evil to anybody. He's the one by her bedside, but she doesn't care. She, she, Deshane is the favorite. Deshane is the one that is, gets more love. The one that is romanticized. This is what I'm, that right there, that scene stuck out to me so, so hard. Like I was like, I can't believe they put that in this show. Why would they do that, bruv? Someone said, bro, that's because Deshane was a boss. What's boss got to do with his mum favouring him over the good son that hasn't done anything evil? That's absolutely ridiculous. That's a ridiculous thing to write in the chat, John Jones. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's not an excuse for anything. And again, that just goes to show black guys, because I'm sure this guy that wrote that is a black guy. We always make concession for criminals and for dysfunction. We always have to make concession for that. That is wild, bro. It's wild. It's wild. Chris was at his mother's bedside. He was there the whole time. He was looking after his mum. And on her last breath, she was calling out for her criminal murderer son. Like, that's... that. You really got to think about that. Like, think about the psychology of that. Think about the message that is saying to the people watching. Because guess what? Whatever you watch on TV is deliberate. See, this is a high level thinking that you lot, a lot of people don't really understand. Like whatever they, you watch, whatever they put on the screen, whether it be music videos, movies, uh, Netflix shows like Top Boy, whatever, it's all on purpose, it's by design. It's by design. It's by design that no matter which type of girl character in Top Boy we're talking about, whether it be a, the good girl or the party girl or whatever, they all seem to be madly attracted to criminals, the, the, the criminal guys. You never saw them get rejected once, bro. <laughs> they never got rejected. They didn't show it anyway. You got to really deep this thing. Really think about what you watch, bro. Like. Crazy, fam. What was it? 
I wrote something else. There was another note. Oh, yeah. So no loyalty, right? I believe that that is a reflection of real life. I, I believe that there is no loyalty amongst the majority of black people, black guys in particular, because a lot of times, you know, envious, jealousy, envious witchcraft and you know all these kind of things that's why most times as a black guy you're better off just being on your own being independent and being on your own you know you know the type of the type of situations that you see in top boy where people will be friends and then the next thing they just delete them each other bro like kind of makes you feel like wow like I, I you know i can't really trust anyone and the fact that a lot of times black guys can fail or are incapable of trusting each other especially when money's involved or especially when women are involved it that that causes us to stay so socioeconomically at the bottom believe it or not press one in the chat if you understand where i'm, where I'm going with that the fact that there's no loyalty, there's no brotherhood and there's no loyalty. Because without without loyalty and trust, you can't get much things done because you're going to be looking at each other, giving each other the side eye constantly. You won't be able to get your own job done because you're going to be looking at the side, making sure that guy's doing his job because you don't trust him. Do you understand? Press one in the chat if you understand what I'm saying. In Top Boy, guys that were, you know, friends from high school, they were they had to delete each other. You know, for this reason or that reason, they had to snake each other or, you know, do some weird stuff to each other. And then they just, you know, weapons get pulled out and people have to get deleted. And I just find it to be kind of weird. I find it to be very weird and I find, I find it to be like a, a, a you know, it's, it's, an, it's not a good message to put out there. And I understand these things happen in real life, absolutely. But like, I just don't, I think Top Boy already had enough negative stereotypes in, 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 the, in the story without having to consistently show people being disloyal and 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 snaking each other i think they had enough they had enough of the usual negative images they didn't need to add that element to the degree that they added that to because at, at the end of the day they all snaked each other in the end deshane snaked each other snaked everyone jamie snaked everyone sully snaked everyone kit snaked everyone jack snaked everyone bro like it was bro like <laughs> no one was to be trusted at the end of the day. It's weird, fam. That's why a lot of times, as I said just as I said just now, a lot of times as a black guy, the best thing is keep yourself to yourself, keep your head down. Don't be flashy. Stop trying to show off to people and, 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 and show everybody what you've got and stuff like that. Be careful who you bring to your house. But be careful who you talk to. Be careful what you say out of your mouth. Stop giving everybody your information. It's just like on YouTube, yeah? I'm on I'm on a on a public platform where anybody can log on, etc. etc. And sometimes a lot of times people will ask me personal questions they want to know more about me and i understand sometimes you want to know more about the person who's speaking and stuff like that but i'll be real with you a lot of times i'll just ignore certain questions because i know that people are very very untrustworthy and and you know just dodgy you know people ask me personal questions about me or oh, where did you go to school what exactly what area are you from like you know this that they'll be asking me really personal questions and if you notice press two in the chat if you've noticed this i don't really get too deep it whatever information i give you is true but i don't give i don't like just blur out everything because you just don't need to bro because at the end of the day people are very very wicked 
and not wicked in a good way wicked as in bad mind evil bro there's a lot of wicked people out there bro there's guys on YouTube that make videos trying to do some Sherlock Holmes investigations about me and trying to, oh, we need to tell everybody this about him. You don't know, you know nothing about me. Absolutely nothing. And you will continue to know nothing and you can speculate as much as you want because you don't know what the truth is because you don't need to know. Stick to what I'm saying. problem with our community is that a lot of times we do not trust each other and in top boy it is displayed very consistently that you cannot trust your brothers because your brothers will turn on you and they might put a hole in you just like sully did to deshane at the end of the show word is not bond people will snake you Deshane snaked Sully and, st and stole the two bags at the end. And then Sully put a hole in him. These were guys that were, they were partners. They were friends. They were brothers from the beginning. Very, very tragic ending. Now let's talk about the characters. Let's talk about the characters. And please, if you haven't hit the like button, do it now, yeah? Deshane, first character. The anti-hero, uh, somewhat protagonist. Yeah? Like, bro, like, at the end of the day, he was not a hero, bro. He was not a good person and he wasn't a hero. Just because he had a soft spot for his mum. I mean, bro, most people have a soft spot in their heart for their mother. That doesn't make them a hero. It doesn't make them a good person, bro. It just makes them a human being. Most people have that innate instinct that you love your mum because your mum loved you and, and looked after you. But that don't make you a hero, bro. At the end of the day, this guy used to go out and do lo lots of crimes and he murked people. And there you go. And that's it, bro. And he didn't care. And guess what? His true nature came out in the last season, the last episodes. His true nature really came to the surface to the point where his girlfriend left him, bro. Because she was in a fairy tale thinking that, oh, she's going to live some uh, Beyonce, Jay-Z, crazy in love uh, romance, bro. With some hardened criminal. No, fam. He didn't care about nothing. He didn't care about anyone, bro. Like. Right? And that's it. And that's it. You know, everybody has flashes of you know, conscience, or everybody has flashes of, you know, oh, let me do a good deed, but that doesn't make you a good person, bro, it's about if you can be good consistently, that's where it's hard, it's easy to just give money away every now and again, you might do a good deed every, every, every couple months, but, you know, the rest of the time, you're dealing poison and deleting people, bro, like, I'm sorry, you're not a good person, you're not a hero, bro, but for some reason in my community, you are seen as a hero. And you're looked at as attractive. But moving on. Sully. <laughs> Sully. Sully was like a, a sociopath. Sully was just like a wild guy. Like a very dangerous character. He was not a hero either. Not, not even slightly a hero. He wasn't even an anti-hero. He was just... I don't know what he was, bro. He was just a criminal. He was just a hardened criminal. He was a murderer. He, And that was it. And all he cared about was money. And then again, they showed... They, they like to show these flashes of... Uh, you know, he's a good person because he loves his daughter and, 
you know, he wants to have a relationship with his daughter and stuff like that. Yeah, cool. But again, that's pretty much natural human instinct for, with, for anybody that's got any sort of, sort of conscience. You would want to look after your children. You would want to make sure your children are all right. You would probably love your children. Yeah, but that doesn't, that doesn't uh, you know, equate to the fact that you've gone out there and deleted people. People who, they had children themselves. Remember, he deleted his friend. I can't remember his friend's name. I can't remember his friend's name. What was it? The guy that had the that had the disability, that had a stroke. What was his name? Hold on, man. Cause he had this he had a child. In the in the Driz, that's it. Driz. When he 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 murdered his own friend. His friend that was with him from all the season one and all of that, and they done all the crimes together and all of that, and he'd ride out and all of that, da da da, da. bruv. And he murked him, bruv. On the rooftop. Now Driz did something disloyal and, and you know, Driz did did snake Sully, but like this this all goes to goes hand in hand that like you know no one could be trusted. But anyway, Sully was just bruv, he was just like he was just he's just a killer, bro. <laughs> Very, no regard for human life, no regard, like, doesn't matter, he, you know, he cared about his daughter, he, he helped out his younger cousin or whatever, or his niece, that crazy chick, when he was living on the boat, but apart from that, he was just, he was just a killer, bro, like, he was just a, 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 a money hungry killer, bro, that wanted power, that was it, you know, he wanted to be the top dog, he wanted to be the top boy in the ends, and that, like, bro, like, a negative, a negative stereotype, a negative, not in any way a role model or anything, and neither was the Shane, right? Uh, the next person I'll talk about is Jack, Jacqueline, Jack, right? The light-skinned chick that always had a, had her hair braided with the tomboy type style, you know, she dated girls and stuff like that, right? Of, mm, my opinion of Jack, my opinion of Jack was, up until the end, Jack was probably the most loyal character, the most consistent and dependable, dependable character in the show, right up until the end, and then, you know, she fell into a desperate situation, and then she did something, you know, uh, wrong, but, at the end of the day, Jack wasn't a hero either. Jack was a villain as well. You know, Jack sent a 14-year-old boy with, with uh, you know, illegal substances and sent him on a train to go and meet some other people in, in North, North England. Bro, like, Jack was not a, a good guy or a good chick. She wasn't a hero. Do you get what I'm saying? Let's keep it real, bro, like. Yeah, she cared about her, her sister and all of that. She cared about her sister, but so what, bruv? That don't make her a hero. At all. Jack murked people as well. Jack burst a strap and, and murked people as well. They all did. <laughs> they all did. And they did it and they never had a second thought. There was no, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. Like, there was no second thought. There's bang, 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 just... And that was it, like... And that, in itself, the fact that in this show, these 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 people was murking, shooting people, and there was no reflection of, or remorse, or, oh my God, I don't want to live this life anymore, or this was too much, I wish I'd never done... There was none of that. It was just cold-blooded reptiles, bro, like, bang, it's just done, like... Every single drill music song you could think of in those moments. <laughs> in those moments, yeah. It's mad, bro. Jamie. Ooh, Jamie. And Jamie got done in by Sully. Jamie's another one. Jamie... Jamie's a very interesting character, right? 
and I watched a couple of videos uh, where they psychoanalyze these characters. And Jamie's a very interesting character because Jamie was living like a double life. Jamie was in a very, you know, un unfavorable situation where she, he was looking after his two younger brothers. He was the breadwinner in the house. There's no mum. There's no dad there. Yeah. And, you know, he was trying to provide the only way or quickest way he knew how, which was to sell illegal substances right and he was a he was a killer as well bro like he was a killer stone cold killer as well like he would definitely pull the trigger and that's it like that's the end of it right and they definitely tried their best to make his character seem somewhat of a hero because you know he was all about his family you know he was trying to do right by his brothers you know he's trying to be the mum and the dad even there was one scene where he was arguing with his younger brother and he was telling his brother that he's the he is his dad like he looks after them so he is the dad now and all of this kind of stuff which i guess it kind of will pull on your heartstrings but at the end of the day he was a stone cold killer and he was a, 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 and, a and a criminal and that's it Bigger Ice Wife for another super chat. He says, that's why I don't like watching horror movies. Uh, E.G. Top Boy. <laughs> oh, and guess what? Jamie killed his best, his own best friend. Shot him in the face in the car. Did you not forget about that? And his best friend, Kit, he set up the 14-year-old boy and he and the 14 year old boy got deleted bro this is why you can't look at this show and look at anyone as like oh that's somebody i can relate to it's, it's, you shouldn't be able to relate to any other characters bro because if you can relate to any of those characters that means you must be like like a villain as well Or you must be a dysfunctional person as well. And I'll be real with you. There's parts in these characters that I relate to. But the, the, the fact of the matter is, I can be real. I'm, I'm very dysfunctional. I've come from a dysfunctional background. I've done dysfunctional things. And I'm not proud of them. And I have to highlight those things. Because there's some people out there who they may watch these kind of uh, shows or movies and stuff like that. And they may look at it as cool. They may look at it as, oh, this is something to emulate. And this is the, the, the what what people like me are meant to be doing and i'm here to tell you it's not I, i'm here to tell you it's a lie it's not fun when you're going to crown court and your freedom is on the line it's not fun when you get stabbed it's not fun when you're getting chased by a whole a load of other guys who are carrying weapons who if they catch up to you they might take your life it's not fun It's not fun where you have to be looking over your shoulder for the rest of your life because you probably snaked somebody or you probably robbed somebody. You probably double crossed somebody and now you're going to have to be looking over your shoulder your, the rest of your life. It's not fun if you have to live with the fear that somebody might kick in your parents' front door at three in the morning or five in the morning. That's not fun. That's not game. I just want to make this very, very clear. Top Boy. I think that the show was entertaining. I will say that. The show was entertaining. But most of these dysfunctional shows that depict a lot of black negative black stereotypes they're always entertaining because it's full of action drama and excitement and violence <laughs> and the normal and the regular audience love watching that they love watching black guys do dirt on other black guys put in work on other black guys they love watching that they love it The thing that you need to understand is that these kind of things are social engineering. 
social engineering. When you are young and you're listening to songs that talk about being a gangster, you are being socially engineered, whether you believe it or not. Your brain is not fully developed yet. You're not fully mature and you're not an adult. You know, you're not really at that point where you can make life-changing decisions. So when you go out there and you're 14, 15 year old boy and you're watching Top Boy getting gassed and now you want to go and live it out outside, bro, like you're going to ruin your life. You're going to probably ruin other people's lives and then you're going to ruin your life in the end. Yeah, you might get some fast cash, but it doesn't last. And that's the reason why they were all stealing from each other in Top Boy, because even though they're making all of this money, it seems like it's never enough. Do you understand? Press one in the chat if you get what I just said. All of these guys, they're trapping every single day. Every single day they are trapping. Every single day they are hustling, bustling, scheming. Every single day. They're, if they're so rich and they're making so much money, why is it that they have to be they, they have to start stealing from each other and snaking each other? Why is that? That's sad, bro. We get a lot of negative representation in the media as uh, black guys in particular and black people in general. I think we need to embrace balance. There are some black kids that come from homes where their parents can't look after them and they go out there and they do legitimate entrepreneurial activities which make them money. There are black people that go out and build businesses. They do Airbnb businesses. They go into trading. They create their own clothing lines. They start their own YouTube channels. And they become successful. Why can't they ever show those depictions in these media outlets? Why is it always Top Boy, Blue Story, like, bruh, Boys in the Hood, like, NWA, all of these kind of dumb shows, bro. Like, I'm like, to be honest, like, I've seen uh, the story is never different, it's the same story. Black boy comes from single parent house with no money, they're broke, go out there, commit crimes, make fast money, start buying stuff, get a girlfriend. Because remember, the girlfriend didn't care before when he was broke, but now he's making fast money and he's a criminal, now he's cool. Now the girl all of a sudden just likes him for no reason. Then boom, then next thing, trouble comes, somebody, you know, tries to rob somebody or whatever, jealousy, envy, you know, Two people used to be friends, they fall out, one of them gets deleted, then the next thing, there's some big gang war, and then more more brothers get deleted, then somebody goes in the in the ground or somebody goes to jail. The end. It's the same story every time, bro. Same story, bro. We got Ice Wife for another super chat. I'd rather watch Nigerian movies than Top Boy. <laughs> Man's talking about watching Nollywood, you know. Nollywood movies are funny, bruv. To be honest, a lot of Nollywood movies are a bit a bit extra as well, to be honest, but I hear you. Can we see some media where they, the, you know, us black kids come from functional families? Maybe that might promote that to, to happen in real life. Because functional black families do exist in this world. There are black kids who grew up with their fathers. They do exist. How about you like the media stop 
only putting the same black caricature people on TV all the time. It's always the same kind of black guys they, they put on TV networks, like big TV networks. Give them a show. The guys talked about Robin stealing and selling poison his whole career. Then you go and give him a TV show. Why? Why is that? It's interesting, bruh. It's interesting. Why are rappers the, the heroes in the black community when they've talked about death and destruction their whole career? They talked about how much mayhem that they've caused out in the real world, how many people that they've hurt directly and indirectly, and they laugh and glamorize them and talk about it like it's a joke, like it's a game. But yeah, we gotta make sure that they become rich and household names. So all they all the girls looking at them will lust after them and only want to be with guys like those guys until those until they hit the wall anyway. Until those 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 three or fours hit the wall and then now they want a good guy. I just find it interesting, bruh. Very interesting. Anyway, with that being said, I'm going to end it there. Um, I think I said everything I wanted to say about the show. Again, you know, I just believe that shows like Top Boy are social engineering. It carries on the negative black stereotypes and it actually influences um, a lot of impressionable minds within this community to go out and live those those lives. And it's just like the music, the music's another like extremely destructive force these days. Um, yeah, that's it. But again, like to the actors that acted in Top Boy, I mean, I think they did a good good job. I think they the acting was very good. You know, um, as again, as I said, I know people that were actually in Top Boy and stuff like that. And I don't, I don't knock anyone for doing the job. Like, you know what I mean? If you got casted to be in Top Boy, get your money, bro. Like, do you get what I'm saying? Like, get your money, you know, make your bread and that. It's just my gripe is, is that why is that, why is it a fact of there's no balance? Do you get what I'm saying? Why is there no balance? We need to start looking at other avenues apart from crime and athletics. Singing and dancing and crime or athletics. I, I'm, I'm sorry. We need to look at other avenues, like, because they do exist. Because guess what? Every other uh, ethnic group on the planet seems to understand that there's more, there's more than just one way to win the game. Do you get what I'm saying? We need to actually promote functional families and functional activities within our community. And it would help us socioeconomically. That's my word. Anyway, that being said, you lot... I appreciate all of you. I appreciate everyone that hit this uh, super chat um, and hit the like button. And if you haven't done so already, do it now. It helps promote the video to more people so that they can get eyes on this because it's a very important message. Yeah. Um, and yeah, with that being said, make sure you're checking out all the videos on my channel. Make sure you're hitting the like button. Make sure you're going to my website as well, uh, www.ambitionsofpower.com. Make sure you go cop one of the t-shirts on my website. Very important that you do that. Um, I do my business properly, yeah? So anyway, with that being said, you lot, I hope you uh, learned something or enjoyed what this, well, enjoyed this talk um, and leave your thoughts in the comment section below, all right? So anyway, I'm out of here. Peace.